God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one the testimony of our sister in Christ uh, about the power, the glory, and the mercy of God the Father to those people who call upon His name. So actually, uh, her name is Ressa Wiley in our YouTube channel. And uh, she told me that she actually emailed a certain guy, this guy, who uh, he emailed him about... Uh, psalm 91 and psalm 23 she also told me that this guy used to argue with her uh insisting that because this guy believed that uh you know we came from aliens or whatever and uh, it, it has something to do with aliens and so rest a while said you know he she's actually like telling him about god the father almighty so anyway she emailed him the the psalm 91 and psalm 23 so she didn't know that this particular time when she emailed him he was actually undergoing difficulties in his life that very day and so she found out after that day that he is heading to the court because he was accused of five different uh you know he was in five different trials different cases so anyway what this man did was um uh, he actually read and probably prayed you know i believe he prayed this psalm 20 psalm, psalm 91 and 23 and it has something to do about you know the protection of the lord to each and every one whoever call upon his name right and so he did and so what happened was before he went to the court because it's going to be a very long trial he's having like five charges and so after that he just found out that he was this the the case was all dismissed and then he was just given a fine 150 and he went home and so he told a uh, rest a while about what had happened and that's what i was telling you right now that his case was dismissed and he was just charged for 150 dollars and now rest a while is actually going to set up a, uh, going to mail or buy him a bible to be mailed to him god bless both of you to god be the glory and praise you know what the lord said even one soul that will be saved the angels in heaven will be rejoicing and we give the glory and praise to god the father i know rest a while i asked her permission that i'm going to share this but uh, we want you know grass a while also was saying that she wants to give the glory and praise to god because all of us are disciples of the lord to go to the world and call the people those who are living in darkness those who are being persecuted those who are in trials those who are having problems right now introduce god in their life because a lot of people they rely on themselves but they don't rely on the lord but the lord said whoever call upon his name will be safe and this is why brothers and sisters we have to remember a lot of people are broken right now. A lot of them are f having fear. They're scared. You know, they are being led to the bondage. Bondage of sin and slavery of Satan. But God's miracle is there. All He wanted is for us to call upon His name. Our life, in our life right now, when you are sinning, when a person is sinning, his life is being led to destruction and death. So same as, you know, the physical form. When you are living here on earth and you committed a crime, you will be going into prison if you are found guilty of the crime. And sometimes not just in prison, but sometimes others will end up into the life sentence or death penalty if it's so severe. But, God do work wonders. And nobody can. Nobody can do this except God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. They came to rescue the people when they call upon their name. That's why the Lord said, whoever call upon His name will be saved. And He mentioned that in Romans 10 verse 13 and Acts 2 verse 21. Brothers and sisters, when a man is living in darkness... They are deceived, right? 
they just like this one they fight and argue with the children of god of who is right they sometimes defend satan they sometimes defend that there's no god sometimes they will just say who cares that they will end up in hell but we as a children of god just like what uh, rest a while did she represents the light of the lord to this man she gave him a prayer a prayer of hope and deliverance and salvation so she gave him a prayer and remember what the lord said we should use his words because that's our sword sword to kill satan so rest a while gave him a prayer and that prayer was being said and being prayed not knowing you know not knowing that this time he will be facing his imprisonment or probably his death outside you know uh, you you don't know you could probably die there inside the inside the jail but the lord will send his angels just like he promised in psalm 91 so <laughs> rest a while send psalm 91 what did the lord say about that i will send an angel up, you know i will send an angel to you to lift you up with their hand so you will not strike your foot against the stone and that's what the lord did sending another god-fearing child to him to send him the prayer the prayer of the warriors of god prayer of uh prayer of repentance and help during the time of trouble and he was rescued that's why the five cases were dismissed and so, you know, this is actually clearly showing the power of God. And now, don't end up there. Just like what Rasta Wiley is doing, he's, she's going to give him a Bible. Because the Lord God, through His Son Jesus Christ, show His power and miracle that He can save him. He can save us, whatever trials, whatever difficulty it is there. Just like what happened during the time of Peter. There's storm and everything. But the Lord said, look straight upon me and you're not going to drown. Look at what happened to Jonah and the other people. The boat is dr drowning because of the storm. But they were still safe. Why? Because Jonah still prayed and asked God's help and presence. So we have to continue. If we showed the love and mercy you know if you show the love and mercy of god to these people let them know god and jesus christ through his words and the bible tell them about the bible gateway to listen to it or give them the bible for them to read so they will know the teaching and the commands of the lord brothers and sisters men we human being can testify god's grace and mercy this guy was committed a crime but then you know he was set free in jail just like what happened with the apostles they were actually taken and put to jail because of speaking about the words of god what happened the lord sent an angel opened the gate there was like an earthquake and they were able to go out look at that one even the soldiers during those times witnessed it but they can't find the answers why? Because they don't know God. Since we know God, we know the wonders that the Lord can do to His children. And that's the reason why Moses was able to set free the Israelites out of the slavery of the Pharaoh with the wonders and mighty work of God the Father. Turning the Niles into red, all those things. And so I even have, uh, I even met somebody also who was rescued by the Lord from jail. He actually committed a crime and then he was in jail. But he was like, before going into jail, he actually prayed to God, asked for repentance and forgiveness from all the sins that he had done. And you know what happened? He has, you know, he was so scared. He knows that he will be in jail. But then, he totally felt the presence of the Lord after reading the Bible and asking for repentance. He said that the angel, Michael, 
was there present in his room that very day. And so he was at total peace knowing that the Lord is with him. And when he was at court, his name was not there. He was even, oh no, th that's a different story. So when he was there, he, he ended up on the, you know, he ended up on jail. Then after that, he was released because his name was not there. And the Lord protected him while he was inside. Oh my goodness. He was even sharing how crazy it is inside. But the Lord sent His people, His words, even inside the jail. There are people who are reading the Bible, protecting one another, giving them hope and eternal salvation, whatever scenario or situation that they're going to have. And this is just an example and telling us, brothers and sisters, the Lord spoke in the Revelation in the last days others will be beheaded others will be experiencing the the trouble here others will be in prison whatever scenario that the lord is going to lead you always remember god is with us he's not going to forsake us he's not going to abandon us who knows the lord is going to lead you there to share the words of God to people who are in prison so they will see the light of the Lord and they will be set free. Remember when Jesus was actually on the cross. There's two murderers beside him. One actually was just like mocking him, but the other one at the very last minute of his life, he actually asked Jesus to to get him with him to bring him with him in his kingdom what did jesus said jesus said from this day on you are going to go with me in paradise praise be to god and that's the lesson that the lord wants us to to understand brothers and sisters sometimes th things happen for the children of god not only to the bad people but also to the children of god and sometimes we thought, oh, the Lord abandoned us and left us alone. No, because God clearly said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Look at what happened to Moses. Moses find out that he was a Jew. He was an Israelite. When he saw another, you know, when he saw two men uh, fighting, he actually killed one of that guy. And because of it, it actually made him run away from that kingdom because he was scared of his life. He knew that he will be either in jail or he will be killed. He ran away. He went to the desert in the wilderness. What happened to him? His life in the kingdom or in the palace totally changed from going into the wilderness and watching the flock of sheep. He lived poor while living there. But what happened? The Lord has a plan for him, bringing him there to the wilderness in order for him to find God and for him to receive the commandments of the Lord and for him to receive the commandments of the Lord to set the people go, to let the people be free from the bondage of Pharaoh. It's actually a big task right and second remember the story of uh and, and this guy also the second guy that i was telling all of you about who was in jail the lord sent him the angel when he prayed and now this is also the answer of god god's answer to our prayer psalm 91 i will send angels for you to guard you in all your ways they will lift you up with their hands so you will not strike your foot against the stone and that's the reason why michael the angel michael came there to give him the assurance that the lord sent him the mighty angel to walk with him and protect him and that's probably the reason why you know when he was in jail he was telling me that when he was in jail there's like a big guy protecting him and the Lord will use people to protect you because He has a plan for you. What happened to me when I was in my 
office when somebody wants to kill me there too. The Lord sent an angel to pinch me all over my face because I slept like, I tell you, it's so hard to wake me up before. When I slept, I slept so good. When I was supposed to be put to jail by all the cops, crooked cops in the city that I live, because they want to extort big money from me and I don't want to give because I don't have money to give them anymore. They're taking all my income out. What did I do? They all connive. They all connive to put me in jail. But I prayed to the Lord. And what did the Lord did? He sent people. He sent people mightier than them who will defend me and protect me against these people. And that's the mighty work of our Lord. And that's the message of the Lord to each and every one of us. Don't fear. Because the Lord said in Isaiah 41, Fear not for I am with you. Do not dismay for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Sayeth the Lord. So that's the promise of the Lord to His people. That's why just like what I'm saying, Whoever call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. In our life right now, we are actually fighting against demon in physical and spiritual form. Physical because a lot of them are actually inside people who are living in darkness. That all they wanted to do is just to hurt other people, to steal, to kill and destroy. But aside from that, there's also spiritual form. But what did the Lord said? Put the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. That we will be able to fight against this wickedness in this world and including the spiritual realm. That's why the Lord said, put the helmet of salvation to let you know that the Lord will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. Always remember that you're fighting not with this human being, but you're fighting against the spiritual forces. Put the shield of your protection that you know covering your heart that you are loved by the Lord, that the Holy Spirit dwells in you, that the Lord gave you, empower you with that Holy Spirit to fight against this evil world. He also gave you the shield, the, the shield that whenever they throw bad words against you, whenever they curse and do things about you, put that shield just like Wonder Woman. Remember Wonder Woman? When they throw guns on her, she's putting her shield and no one can uh, strike uh, bullets on her. That's what the Lord is trying to tell us. Whenever they throw stones on us, put your shield to cover you. Knowing, believing, and have faith that Jesus is in you and no one is greater than them. No one than great no one that no one is greater than Jesus and God the Father. So these evil forces are just less like fly. It won't affect us because we have that faith. We believe that God is with us. And aside from that, use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's why we need to pray constantly and use the words of God against these people. Sometimes when people are fighting against us, they curse you, they say bad words against you, they will put you down. And sometimes they will use the name of Jesus Christ in order to scare you and put you down. Remember, during the time when Satan was trying to, uh, to deceive Jesus, he, tempting Jesus, remember he even quoted the words of God in Psalm 91. Look at that. He even said, throw yourself, throw yourself down and the Lord God will, will send an angel to catch you. See, that's how Satan works. He's quoting the words of God, but then he won't believe in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior and the only way. And so when people are hurting you, cursing you, whatever curses they do, when you are facing trials and difficulties in life, instead of crying and weeping there, blaming God of what's happening to you, pray and cry and weep. 
to ask God's presence to help you and rescue you because He will be there to send His mighty warriors of angels upon you to rescue you. And that's what happened to Lot. They're supposed to be killed there. But what happened? God sent, because of the intervention of, Mo, uh, of Abraham, God sent the angels to go there to rescue them and bring them out. And that's the power of the Lord. And He promised that to us a lot of times in the Bible, including Psalm 91 and even on Psalm 23. That whatever even there's flood you're not going to drown the even the water in the river will not flash you away even if they throw you into the fire you're not going to be burned and that's the promise of the lord is that going to be true what happened to david and his friends because they loved the lord they were thrown into the furnace so hot that even the people who threw them were actually burned but were they burned no, because the angel of the Lord was there protecting them the whole time. Even the tip of their hair were not burned. And that's the power of our mighty God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord said, He wants us to repent with all our hearts. Call on Him so we will be saved. And once we are saved, don't just stop in there. Walk with Jesus, get to know Him, pray with Him, and so that you will have the assurance when you are born again, when you will receive Him and be born again, that you will have your salvation and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we all know that we are salt and light of the world. Just like what the Lord said in Matthew 5, 14, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its savor, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and be trampled by men. So you are the light of the world, a city on top of the hill, and you should not be hidden, right? So we have to remember the salt whenever we cook. We have to put salt on our food to have that fa flavor. And now with what's going on now with the world that they're actually changing, mind control they're doing. You know, this is just my opinion. They're telling people don't drink, don't eat salt because it's bad for you. And if you have high blood pressure, it's bad for you. You're not supposed to be eating salt. Then why did God the Father, why did God the Father said? We are the salt of the earth. Physically, if you, you know, literally, if you think about that. He said, the food is not tasty if there's no salt. So if we are salt, of, therefore we need to eat a food with salt too. Because that's how it is. That's what the Lord said. And secondly, the Lord compared us to be like salt. We are supposed to give flavor to the world to show the love and that's how it's going to be you know living nice here in the world if you show love if you show kindness if you show patience compassion understanding to one another that's how life is supposed to be to show that and then life will be meaningful not just dull you know sometimes people will say you when when you follow the lord other people will say oh your life is like meaningless already because you're not having fun anymore you all you do is just talk about the lord you research about the lord and you do things about the lord all the time no life is meaningful still but the lord is calling us for something and sometimes it's different Look at what happened to Moses. He is the chosen son of God and he has different assignment. Look at Jacob and his brothers. He also have, or Benjamin also, or Joseph. He has different assignment also compared to the others. Look at Jesus compared to the other apostles. 
if you compare them, they have different assignments. And that's why we have to respect and support one another depending on the assignment that the Lord gave them. Look at what happened to Mary and Joseph. If you think about the life of Joseph, he is spoken in the Bible just a few times only. Try to look at his life. Do you think it will be easy to be a stepfather of Jesus that time? That when he married Mary, he found out that Mary was pregnant already? And during those times, they need to marry a girl who is virgin because if not, they will, be throw, they will be stoned and they will be stoned to death. But he found out that Mary is pregnant. And so what happened? Until the angel of the Lord told him, that it's, you know, the baby is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And after that, what did he do? He was there beside Mary the whole time, protecting her. Why? Because the Lord God has a plan for Mary to be protected because she is going to give birth to the Son of God who will save the world from their sins. The assignment of Mary is so different. She is so is pregnant before even get, being married. But she said, you know, she's blessed because she was chosen among women to be the mother of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't mean we will pray to her because there's only one way to God. It's only Jesus Christ. But we have to love and respect her because she is blessed among women. And others misunderstood that. We have to love her being the mother of Jesus. But not to pray to her because she's not going to save you. It's only Jesus Christ. Now look at the life of Joseph. She, he was there to defend Jesus, to protect Jesus until he grows up. And to protect Mary also. And after his role, he passed away and never been spoken. So other people have different assignment. Look at Moses and Aaron. Aaron's assignment is different with Moses. Look at the assignment of 12 apostles. They're so different with the other Christians. So brothers and sisters, we always have to remember God is sending His angels. He even appeared Himself to people to, to save us. To save us and save us from our sins. And aside from that, literally saving us. How many times did He save me in my life? And that's the reason why the Lord wants me to testify for Him. I was kidnapped twice. First one, they waited for me. And the Lord sent somebody, my cousin, to tell me to sneak out and go out of the school and run, jump on top of the fence, climbing the tree, jump out there. And then they picked the wrong girl. Knowing it was me sending my dad a letter that I was kidnapped already. But where was I? The Lord saved me. And may the Lord save that girl too, who they took and put it... Put, oh. They put her inside the bag, put in the car, it's actually in the tricycle, and they run away. I've never heard anything about that because our focus of attention is about me and my family and how we're supposed to get out of that city because of my dad's job. And I know I testify about that. We were there in a singing contest and somebody shoot the guy who was singing just before me. And the one who shoot was a cop. And he works with my dad because my dad was a cop. And he want my dad to dismiss it. But whatever trial is there, the Lord will send you. Second time around, I was kidnapped with my brother. We're already in the vehicle. For 30 minutes, 30 minutes or so, less, more or less. But what had happened? The Lord led me, just spoke to me. Oh my goodness, I don't know. I was young. But there's like something in me telling me on what to do. Not to, not to show I'm scared. Not to show I'm freaking out. But to calm down. 
to calm down and what am I going to answer? Who's telling us that? It's the Lord. Why? Because He has a plan for me. He knows me before I was even born. He has a plan for me. He has a plan for you, for all of us. And all we have to do for so long in our life, the Lord's been showing different miracles in our life, saving us over and over again. And a lot of us are still sleeping for a long time, very disobedient, very res disrespectful, sleeping still, like a foolish son who will just run away, like the lost sheep. But brothers and sisters, time is too short. The Lord wants us to wake up because He is coming. He wants us to see the light. He wants us to be the salt of the earth. He wants us to bring this soul to other people to savor the love, the mercy, the grace, the the oh, the salvation, the kindness, the generosity of our God the Father. He wants us to share that to share that love to other people so they will savor it too. And they will say, "Oh God, you are the great God." We are also the light of the world because God dwells in us through His Son, Jesus Christ, through His words, and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and that light should continually shine in us and bring that light to wherever we go. It's like this world is in darkness. People who don't know the Lord, they're living in darkness. They're like, they're like in a jail they're like in prison that is in total darkness and we will go and visit them bringing the light of jesus that's why the lord said have you visited me when i was in prison and the lord showed me that in my dream too that my my adopted son was like there and i asked the lord to release him from that prison cell from that darkness that the Lord will open the gates and lead him out in Yeshua's name. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. Bring the light of Jesus. And I was starting to talk to my adopted son. Telling him about the Lord. And this is what we're supposed to do to one another, brothers and sisters. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the Lord said, People, you know, we need to repent. We need to repent with all our hearts. Call on God and He will save us. For He said, whoever call upon my name will be said, saved. Therefore, brothers and sisters, this is the word of God in John 8 verse 12. Once again, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So brothers and sisters, God is giving His light to those who call upon His name. And once you find Him, stay in His light. For He will lead you to the narrow road, to the narrow gate, through your salvation. So we will be there with God the Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit and the 24 elders and all the children of God in heaven, the new Jerusalem, for eternity he wants us to be perfect for he is perfect and he wants us to walk righteously and once you are saved by the Lord don't just keep your mouth shut testify for the glory of God because God is great God is love and forgive one another love one another and brothers and sisters God bless you in Yeshua's name amen and amen